You can record whenever I said. Uh huh. Yeah. So I feel like you've clicked like ten times. Yeah. So I. So who knows if we're recording or not? Yeah. Well, uh, I can tell you right now that we are. Oh, it would have been really funny if you got. We are not. Gotcha. I mean, just we so can, you can not be if I hit another button. You should just like cut off my like weird starts to the podcast. So like you just let me ramble and pretend. Oh, oh, we're recording it. Yeah, keep going with your very funny intro. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, welcome to the Brothers Game Podcast, where we talk about dogs and whatever else. Brian, um, how are you today? I don't feel that's an accurate description of our podcast, but no, okay. I'm pretty sure. Talking dogs is mm -hmm. what I like to call our podcast. Yeah. How have uh, you been? Good. Good. Uh, it's been a while since we've recorded, I feel yeah. like. Uh, you're drowning in house. Uh, I am drowning in house. Right? You're just up to your literally, eyeballs in house. And at one point, almost literally. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that first. I bought a house mm -hmm. uh, with my wife. I've been there. It's nice. You have. We did talk about, I think we mentioned that last time at least. Yeah, we did. That, I, that, I, that, that happened. So that's all I've been doing. Mm -hmm. When you buy a house, there's a lot of things to do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you have nothing. Especially when you're redoing all the flooring all and the repainting flooring and painting everything. all the walls and, and yeah. breaking pipes because uh -huh. for fun. Uh, Learn, I'm a plumber now. Yeah. Turns out learning how to install various fixtures. Very and, very funny because yeah. of the Mario thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're basically for, Mario. Basically, you know Mario and all that plumbing he does mm -hmm. constantly. So, I'll start with that story. Mm -hmm. I wanted a new faucet. Because other than other than playing video games, I also cook for a living. So you wanted a fancy. Dancing. I want a nice <laughs> faucet, fancy dancy. I want a. <laughs> I want a. I was like, that's, that's, this house needs know, a fancy dancy. I'm just going with it, fancy dancy. I that's want a, a new fancy term. dancy faucet. Mm -hmm. So I got one of them cool sprayer types that are sort of like what you'd get in a have in a dishwasher sink at a restaurant. Also, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um. So I looked, watched a bunch of videos on how to install a faucet. And I was like, now you can just YouTube anything. Yeah. I'm like, Psh, easy, so easy. So I, and at first, very easy. I got yeah. the got the original faucet out pretty quickly. But but then attached to the walls, there are these two little uh, water shutoff valves. Mm -hmm. For one for cold water, one for hot water. Right, and the hot water one was uh, pretty tight on there, mm -hmm. and so I go to loosen it. I of course shut I shut those off, so I mean there's no water coming out of those. Right, but the problem is if it breaks behind where the shutoff <laughs> valve is, there's water back there. Yep. So I go to you know loosen this this hot water one, and it explodes in my hand essentially. Awesome. Absolutely insane. So the the C P C P V C is what it was. But that's the most of the water pipes in the house. Uh -huh. Snapped and started gushing water at me. Awesome. <laughs> and that, that's like and it's one of those moments where you're just like, hmm, now what? Yeah. Because like I haven't had very many panic moments like that in life. Yeah. Like I haven't been through <laughs> much, honestly. I'm a pretty cautious cushy person uh -huh. so that was a new experience uh luckily my wife was awesome and helped out as best as she could also mm -hmm. i was basically just trying to shove something in there and stop the water while i figured out what else to do right um my wife actually called the fire department mm -hmm. so that's the first time i've had to call emergency services uh for myself and um they came and though uh, when they came i had just remembered basically where the water shutoff valve was to the whole house in the, oh, yeah. in the garage somewhere. So I was able to get that off and then, but there's still water in the pipes. So mm -hmm. like, it's still just pouring water. Uh, and so the fire department helped us figure out where everything was. They were super helpful mm -hmm. and like super chill about it. They're like, Oh yeah, this happens. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not a huge loser, but, uh, and luckily my shop vac was right there cause I do some woodworking too. And mm -hmm. so that was, thank God, because that does water. So that picked it up pretty quick. Yeah. And this happened before we got new hardwood flooring, which is awesome. Yeah. Because <laughs> if this had that happened, sucked to have yeah, a couple of weeks that. later, 
that would have sucked brand new real bad floors but it didn't get past the kitchen and we we got it taken care of pretty quickly so could have been a lot worse but i I know a lot more about how water works and and all that and so next morning i had to replace the whole thing all the the shut off valves and everything but i mean guess i guess that's a good learning experience (laughs) for me now if it ever happens again you know what to do yeah great that was fun uh I know a lot more about plumbing than I ever did. Mm-hmm. Like I know what what a water shutoff valve is now and yeah. how to change one. So I guess that's I guess that's a good thing. Other than that, we've got we went and got all the flooring replaced. We got nice hardwood mm-hmm. through everything. And Including like, the room that will be the future studio. Or yes, we will I will I do want to talk about that a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Um we had I think I'll go into this. I won't tell just story after story for house. I'll save some of these, I think, because no. there's a lot of weird ones. But there's one room where we can't have hardwood flooring, <laughs> and that's a whole thing. You don't even know about this, do you? Oh, maybe not. Oh, ooh, tease. I'm teasing. <laughs> so maybe I'll get into that later. Let's talk about that room. Yeah, the... The, the possible studio room. Yeah. What's that about, Brian? Oh, you're asking me, even though it's in your house? <laughs> yeah. Well, as far as I'm aware, the idea is that you're going to put all your nerdy crap in there. Oh. All your uh, games. The nerdy crap room. Perfect. And uh, you're going to paint it TARDIS blue. I am painting it TARDIS blue, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, that's actually what my, you might think, oh, you're, you know, taking over a room because your wife made you or something. No, nothing like that. Actually, we, me and my wife bonded, first bonded and started a relationship through our mutual liking of Doctor Who. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very mutual decision, yeah. which is pretty cool. And while she's not a big gamer, she is a total nerd yeah. just like us. Totally so. into it. So yeah. that's that's pretty awesome. So yeah, that will be happening soon. There is flooring in there now. Mm-hmm. And we'll we're gonna start painting probably this week. So we'll probably do the the downstairs first mm-hmm. and then start doing those upstairs rooms. So yep. That'll be cool. And then maybe someday video. Yes. So we're going to make that sort of uh, have a table in there for recording Mm -hmm. and have some sort of cool, you know, nerdy stuff in the background. And yeah, we really want to start doing video, uh, a video portion of the podcast. So we'd probably still keep, um, I like sort of the Rooster Teeth formula Mm -hmm. where they have the uh, video version on YouTube and their website Mm -hmm. and then audio still on all the other podcast platforms and stuff. yeah and I, I i don't want to like i want this to be an audio first podcast yeah. that happens to audio have friendly video. Yeah. still so that yeah. you get y'all who are listening through your various podcast apps won't yeah. miss out on anything don't want to overdo the the video aspect mm-hmm. but i know personally i enjoy watching video podcasts mm-hmm. even if they're just sitting at a table talking so yeah. and speaking of nice. shout out to our listeners yeah let's shout out we just hit 100 downloads which yeah. is a it's actually a big milestone cool. for us. We I only mean, have 10 episodes. Nobody's ever heard of us. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> the we're, fact that we I mean, we're have just, 100 downloads, that's pretty cool. We're just starting, you know, we're, we have no, you know, uh, way to really push stuff. Like, we, yeah, don't, we, know, don't, we don't know anyone we famous. We don't have, like, famous YouTube channels. Yeah, who's shouting us out or anything. Yeah. So, I mean, 100 downloads is pretty cool, actually. So, uh-huh. thank and, you to you guys, yeah. And shout out in particular to Alaska, who Turns represents out, the second largest uh, state of weird. our listeners. Yeah, awesome. Like, obviously, the majority is Oregon, because that's our friends and family. But, yeah, yeah exactly. the fact that we've got total strangers so, in hey, different parts of the world. if you're listening in Alaska, awesome. good on you. <laughs> so, thanks. Maybe comment or something. That'd be awesome. Sh- yeah. uh, shout us, you know, look at us on Twitter or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Which, by the way, our Twitter handle is? Yes, I'll say it again at the end of the podcast, but just in case you're wondering, that is at Game Brothers Pod on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So go over there. Follow us. We'll be posting a lot of stuff. I'm trying to keep keep up on it. Post funny gaming stuff. Post yeah. when we get a new episode. Stuff like that. If we ever talk about something that really... To get across, you need the visual aspect. I'll post pictures on there as well, stuff yeah. like that. So, a That's nice good. little companion to the podcast. So, yeah, go follow. Yeah. Thank you. So, in the time since our last recording, I've still been playing games. Um, and what's that, what's that like? Yeah. So we we talked about um, PSO in a recent podcast, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, 
it actually made me want to go back and play the old one. Oh, right. And yeah, take a went, look at all you my... You went back and played a bunch. Yeah, take a look at my old characters and just see where I was at. And mm -hmm. uh, so my my ranger, which was my first character... That's your big one. level 108, 105, some, somewhere around there. You um, went and checked and you forgot again? Or? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, it's already been a couple of weeks now. <laughs> That's true. Anyway. Um, August has flown by. Who, who's got almost 600 hours logged on him. And then... <laughs> My Insane. force, who has less than 200, is about the same level. Yeah. And reached, uh, got all the way to the ultimate mode uh, ruins. She's she's tough. Yeah. She's, her damage output is just ridiculous. It's, ridiculous. it's so yeah. much higher than all my other characters. Turns out force is really the only way to go in high level like that. So Because uh, a gold rifle can only do so much damage. Right. So <clears throat> when you're a cast, when you're an android... Um, you, your consolation for not being able to use text <laughs> is traps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these traps are Ridiculous. not that great yeah. compared to text. They're they're garbage. Right, but, right. Uh, like they they can be useful, but compared uh, like text do so much damage, mm -hmm. and there are different elements and all that. And traps, you've got freeze trap, which will freeze enemies around you for a few for a second or two. You have damage traps, which do. Uh, pretty mean a bit of damage. damage i mean yeah. it's more than a heavy attack but not more than like five heavy attacks right, so it's right. it's nothing huge and then confuse traps yeah which are so that's, arguably the most, the most useful, useful especially yeah. in late game late i would agree game. yeah so i have my my main character had been stuck in the ultimate mode mines for Probably two years, maybe longer. <laughs> I don't know. I forget how long it's been since I, I mean, actually it's got, first got there. Because yeah. every enemy takes so long to kill. Oh, yeah. You're just sitting there mashing attack yeah. for however long. And it's ridiculous. so I started just abusing traps. I just would use confuse traps especially as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And the enemies would actually do quite a bit of damage to each other. Mm -hmm. So I, I relied That's on cool. those pretty heavily. Yeah. And... Uh, and then the Turns out mind, using all the stuff that they give you yeah. is helpful. So when I first fought the day relay, the, the, yeah, the boss of the caves of ultimate mode, mm -hmm. that was one of the single longest boss fights I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It was so long. It had so much health and I did so little damage. When I fought the mind boss, I was sure that this was going to be like a two hour fight mm -hmm. and it wasn't at all. It was. It only took a little longer than it does on lower difficulties, hmm. so I, that was a pleasant surprise. How different is that boss? Uh, Not very. Is it still just like the floating things across the computer screen? Yeah, there's and the, stuff the like screens, that. and then uh, you go down, and there's like the heart shaped yeah. um, machine that you fight, and it has basic similar p powers of the gotcha. other difficulties. So yeah. Um, so I have now reached the ultimate mode ruins on two characters. Yeah. Sweet. And then I decided to try. So I have not played episode two very much. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is because it is so much more annoying than <laughs> episode one. It is so much more tedious. All right. So I was, I've been touched episode two. I decided to play through the first few areas of the ultimate mode episode two. And good grief, this took like four hours to get through the first two areas of Ultimate Mode. Just everything had so, did so much, everything had so much health. Yeah. And then, so in the first three difficulties, normal, hard, very hard, you have these um, poison lilies. Yeah. These flowers yeah. that shoot poison and totally. can paralyze you. And they laugh at you. And when you're an android, it's great because neither of those things do anything to you. Right. So as long as you keep your distance, they won't hurt you at all. Well, in ultimate mode, you have ob lilies, which shoot Magid, which, if which you don't is know, a, is dark magic that kills you in one hit. If it hits, kills you in one hit. Yeah. So in ultimate mode... It's a, it's a guillotine attack, yeah. If you're, if you're running around and an ob lily shows up there's a good chance you're just going to die gonna really die. quickly and you'll go into a room and there are two or more of them sometimes yeah. and then just, and you're dead. It's like, so these, these rooms are just, are built for, I mean, groups. Yeah. Like they're built for multiple yeah, players. Again, PSO was made to be multiplayer. Yeah. I'm playing it, it completely different than how the developers intended. But also the single player exists. Yeah. So it shouldn't be that hard. Like they mm -hmm. shouldn't have made it that hard. Right. Like yeah. sh it should be more it, doable. Yeah, and it's not so much that it's hard. It's just that the numbers get ridiculous. Well, it's like stupid. 
Yeah. I mean, not, I guess, hard. The amount of health that each enemy has compared to the man amount of damage that Depends you can do as a single Depends on your definition of hard, I guess. Character. Yeah. If your definition of hard is lots of health for the enemies with low which damage I could from you. sometimes. Which, that describe. is kind of Japan's <laughs> yeah, idea of what hard is in an RPG. Hard. Yeah. yeah. It's just high high level, so it kills you with one hit. Mm -hmm. Hard is grind until you're strong enough to, to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Sad. Yeah, and and then not fun. What what separate what makes episode two worse is that especially in the first couple of areas you're in very tight corners mm -hmm. with a large number of enemies, mm. and so especially with things like oblilies, you turn a corner and you're dead, <laughs> and so then you have to uh, like be you memorize really, basically yeah. where all the enemies are, and you've just got to do like run, uh, uh, shoot and hide tactics. Mm -hmm. Like you pop out of a corner, shoot a couple of times, run away before the before the Magid hits you. Which is just weird for an MMO like that. Like, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> yeah, and so and then it just took so long. Uh, uh, like it wouldn't have been as big a deal if it didn't take so long to kill everything. Yeah, and so that's why it took like four hours. It's just how much health everything had. Bosses like that are so weird. That just like take hours, literally. Like even mm -hmm. if you're doing okay. Yeah. They just it just has so much health that you're just attacking mm -hmm. over and over it's an endurance hard instead of yeah whatever there's else. this uh they, it, there are like parallels to episode one so like in episode two there's this boss the the barbara which is a uh it's like a sea monster basically but it's a lot mm -hmm. like the worm in yeah um episode one and it will like clamp onto the side of the boat but it only stays there for like half a second and then it lets go. And oh, so interesting. So it's you, way harder. <laughs> it's a lot harder to actually land very many hits on it. Yeah. Because the one in episode one lingers for quite a long time. Yeah. You can get like four triplets of attacks off yeah. pretty pretty easily. Dang. So, um, yeah. So that was PSO. Um, I also have a couple of other characters and I got one of them from hard to very hard mode. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I still, uh, I still think um, one of my favorite. I think the Dark Fowls is actually one of my favorite boss fights because mm -hmm. uh, its third form it just looks cool and the music is cool. Mm -hmm. Very JRPG final boss, mm -hmm. like kill God type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I love that meme where it's like, yeah. Uh, I, I, first I think mission. we, we yeah. mentioned that uh, in another episode. Love that. But <laughs> so yeah, true. Kill God. <laughs> Especially in most Final Fantasies, that's certainly the truth. Yeah. So, I I have tried to start Pokemon Diamond several times, and I finally played all the way through it. And so, a uh, uh, well, here, some people really warning. rag on yeah, it. Yeah, fair warning for, for viewers. This is going to be a lot of Sinnoh hating. <laughs> no, so. so, I don't want to do that because really, it, so, I was thinking about this. If I had never played Gen 1, yeah. and then I went back today and played it, I would probably have a lot of the same criticisms of Gen 1 that I do of Gen 4. Yeah, a lot of Gen 1 is nostalgia. Mm -hmm. The reason I love those games is absolutely nostalgia. And I don't have any for Gen 4 because I right. didn't play it as a kid. Totally. So I'm going back and playing it for the first time as an adult. And yeah, it's... I feel like it... And it's... It is my least favorite of the Pokemon games I have played so far. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not like there's there's not a whole lot wrong with it necessarily. Yeah. It's just another Pokemon game. They didn't I don't feel like they did much new. Um and the few things they did that were new, I didn't really do anything with because I didn't mm -hmm. care because they seemed too gimmicky. Yeah. But my single biggest criticism of Sinnoh of Gen 4 of Pokemon mm -hmm. Diamond is that they introduced a ton of Pokemon mm -hmm. and you see just a tiny fraction of that. Yep, you don't get any of them. The <laughs> I felt like there was way more monotony in the Pokemon Extremely. you encountered in Gen 4 than even in Gen 1. Yep. And Gen 1 has like one-fifth the number of Pokemon right. or something. That's that, I was just telling you why. that's why I hate Sneasel so much. <laughs> it's like, I f and like Bidoof, it's like because that's the only two pokemon in the game i think you uh, uh, uh floatzel or Floatzel? floatzel's yeah. pre-evolution because yeah, oh, the, the like dark ice type floatzel Sneasel's yeah. awesome floatzel yeah 
I thought weasel. That's why sneasel. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, that one. And then uh, I felt like it used the same formula that Gen three did, which was the uh, like felt very similar to Gen three. Yeah, where but it's, not as it's a a team, another team that's trying to destroy the world by summoning a a, a legendary, legendary Pokemon. Yeah. And then they it, Which also is Gen true of five and six also. And then but. again, Gen four introduced more legendaries than any other generation before it, yeah. and you only get to encounter a, a small number of them. Yeah, which other yeah. ones are too hard to it's get. It's just silly. Arceus and so on. You can't yeah, just, just get event Arceus. only Pokemon. Yeah, like that's just ridiculous. Which is really I cool think. when the game first comes out. <laughs> Yeah, and not cool. Ten like, years later, when like you're why can't I get? Why isn't there a way in game for me to get it yeah. legitimately? Like, like this far in the future, there should just be like a code you can just put. Because I understand that even in Gen One, there was a Pokemon sure you couldn't ways, get new yeah. without a glitch yeah. or without going to an event. I understand that, but it was only one Pokemon. Yeah, that you couldn't get. You could get every other one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that I, was that was my biggest issue with Gen Four. <laughs> The other problem, this is maybe a little weird and maybe specific to me, but I felt like the game felt really slow and really sluggish. Mm -hmm. uh, just from like even a physical input perspective, like yeah. the time it took to for your character to walk, the time it took for menus to uh, to move through menus. I had like the turbo boost boost function on, and it still felt way it too still slow. felt sluggish. Yeah, I agree that it was a very slow blah game to yeah. me. I like I played it, um, you know, a long time ago now, probably six, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. But um, I just remember it being boring. Like, yeah. like I don't even I don't even say I would hate it. Yeah. I just like the variety of Pokemon and just the overall feel of it. Yeah, Cause and I also because we have no nostalgia for it. That's a big part yeah. of it. I think. So you know, in Gen but, Three, you've basically got two rivals. You've got May, and you've got. Um, if if you're the boy, you've got May. Yeah, and I guess if you're if you choose a girl character, it's him, some boy. Yeah, yeah. the male okay. the male right. character. Yeah, right. Because you play as May if you're a girl. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but like, there's that there's the kid who's there's the other guy. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, green haired guy. <laughs> and like May seems to have a lot of personality. Yeah, Dawn. You speak. You say like two words to her in the entire yeah. game. Yeah, and that's like, it. Dawn's great in the anime. Uh huh. And in, and in the manga. But, but in like, the game, you in the game, you don't get to know her at yeah, all. She doesn't do anything. Uh -huh. I, I you also never fight with her. That. I was um, sad you because fight once with her, just from the anime and stuff, I already liked Don, uh -huh. and I like uh, Diamond too. Actually, I like yeah. him a lot. But yeah, I feel like in the game they were like very underutilized. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with that too. It, it that played into just the blahness of it to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if they made a, I wonder if they do actually make a remake. Mm -hmm. Which of course people are dying for. I wonder if they would add a lot more to it. Yeah, in, that, in that that would way. be interesting to see. Because like even in I mean Alpha Alpha Sapphire Omega yeah. Ruby had a lot of added stuff. To and it, I think so. maybe my opinion of Gen Three is higher because of Omega yeah. uh, Omega no, that's me, Ruby me and well. Alpha Sapphire because that's I didn't actually ever finish the original Ruby or Sapphire. Mm -hmm. I played I just played Gen Six. Instead, I played eighty percent of, of Emerald Sapphire instead. on my own. Mm -hmm. But then the first time I beat it was Alpha Sapphire also. Yeah. And yeah, that probably is why, why I like it more. Yeah. But yeah. And then, uh, so after that, I started playing Pokemon Black and mm -hmm. immediately liked it better. Yeah. Yeah. It The look and feel is uh, more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I like the two rivals, yes, uh, Charon too. and Bianca. Bianca's amazing. Everyone Bianca's loves Bianca. Bianca's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Ultra Moe character. <laughs> yeah. Everyone loves Bianca. Yeah, I I would agree that it is objectively a better game, yeah. black, a black and whiter, just better and just improvement wise. It's just yeah. a clear improvement, I would say. So um, I because I'm playing on an emulator, I did have to put in a cheat code in order to get experience. But uh, yeah, doing that, it worked. So because, uh -huh. yeah, the was that like a anti-piracy thing they did in the game or I don't know something like that. Because that's a thing. Like every ROM of black and white, you can't get EXP. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I don't I'm know not what sure that's what about. it what it I'd what like the reasoning to is. Research that maybe a little bit. But um, yeah. I felt like the global critical strike chance was way higher than any Pokemon game I've ever played. Huh. I had an unusually high number of critical strikes, both 
uh, from my Pokemon and against my Pokemon. Oh, interesting. I don't know why. That huh. was just a weird thing I noticed. It felt like, like there were way more critics. Like, wow, there! Uh, I just got crit again. You just got a weird lucky game? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that is interesting. I feel like every time you play through Pokemon, weird stuff happens. Yeah. Like you feel like things miss more often than usual or yeah. hit or like things with low accuracy hit more often than usual or whatever. Yeah. I feel like that always always happens with a Pokemon playthrough. Yeah. I liked the gym leaders too. Mm-hmm. Uh, All the character five. designs were really good. Yeah. All the uh, characters were really cool, I thought. And uh, Good Pokemon they added as well. I mean, yeah. I do think it's funny how they've decided that every gen needs an ice maze now, ever yeah. since Gen 2. <laughs> so and they true. always frustrate me. Mm-hmm. Too real. Like, I'm not terrible at puzzles, but I'm not uh-huh. very, I'm not great at them. And I have, the answer will be right in front of my face and I just can't see it. And so <laughs> I'll have to look up like a guide that shows the directions if, you have to go in count, order to get through the maze. If you count Rocket Hideout and Silphco. They kind of had the same thing in Gen 1, too. Yeah, I guess. Also, they are very similar. Like, you go one direction and you can't yeah. stop or whatever. Yeah. I enjoyed... The one I enjoyed most was probably X and Y. The ice caves. Yeah. And X and Y, I enjoyed. Uh, in, in, what's funny is I've had Gen 1 memorized since, like, mm-hmm. my third playthrough. And I've played it dozens of times now. Mm-hmm. So, like, I... It's something I memorized like 20, 20 years ago, literally, and yet I still remember it clear yeah, as day. I can still brain. I can still get through Rock Tunnel without Flash. Mm-hmm. I can still get through the Rocket Hideout and uh, Sylphco by memory. Mm-hmm. I don't need a guide to. It's uh, like I think people. Anytime we've you grew up playing video games, there's a few games like that that are so ingrained in your brain. Yeah. That you know every bit of it That is forever. basically muscle memory. Yeah, it, forever you know every bit of that game. Yeah. A lot of people have that with... I don't have that with NES games because I didn't really play them right, until later either. in life. But like people who can play the first Legend of Zelda mm-hmm. and just remember where every little thing is, I'm yeah. amazed by that. I'm like, dude, that's nuts. Yeah. But it's the same thing as you know knowing Rocket Hideout or yeah. knowing or, uh, Rock Tunnel and stuff like that. And like we we know where everything in Paper Mario is. Exactly, too. it's the Paper yeah. Mario thing for us. Like to to think you don't know where some of the badges are hidden, I'd be like, how is that possible? Yeah, <laughs> who doesn't know that that's right? That hammer throws above the uh, gate to Toad Town. Like, yeah. how would you not know that? <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's one of those things. Yeah, for me, it's definitely. N64 and GameCube mostly. Like Sunshine. Like yeah. I know every inch of Sunshine. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. it's like insane. So anyway, yeah, you're so you did you finish black and white? So um I beat the Elite Four okay. and I had the showdown with N. Uh-huh. With N's uh, really cool. Zekram and Rashiram. N is a great character. Yeah. I feel like this seems like the game with the most end, uh, post-game content yeah. I've seen. It was praised a lot for that. I remember yeah. when it came out. But the thing is, is so my team is all like around level 48. And the end game, post-game content is starts at level 65. Man, you have really low, a low pretty low team. It's because I don't grind at all in okay. Pokemon, yeah. ever. Well, right, that's true. I, I, I just fight every trainer that I come across. And occasionally, if I come across a wild Pokemon that I think I can beat quickly, I might mm-hmm. also kill it. I guess, I guess, yeah, with me, I pretty much don't never run from wild fights and stuff. Yeah. I pretty much always kill everything. I use so. repel a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I I try to have mine, my team of six at least at 58. Oh, yeah. Uh, well. By the Elite Four, so. Yeah. And so in most games, I can beat the Elite Four with that mm-hmm. strategy yeah. by the time I get to them. Except, but with some challenge, I'm except, sure. Except, of course, in Pokemon Diamond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Diamond, they don't mess around. That took you have to it be took pretty high several level. Several tri- I had to basically I basically grinded by beating the first couple of Yeah, you just grind uh, on the Elite Four. Uh, yeah. Elite Four members. It's a good way to grind. I mean Also, here's here's my other beef with Pokemon Diamond. So We love it. There's a it's great. there's a type combination that's frustrating for me to fight against because I'd never use grass types, and that is water mm. ground. Yeah, you do never use grass types. Yeah, I never do. So water ground is so easy. Water ground is only weak strength. against grass. I mean, there are other types that will do just normal damage to it yeah. and won't aren't uh, ineffective or super effective. But yeah, they are everywhere in diamond. Hmm. 
everybody has a water ground Pokemon of some sort. A lot including of Gastrodons. Half, yeah, including half the Elite Four. Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, like Quagsire, Quagsire and Gastrodon, yeah. and yeah, and that was a really annoying type combination to fight with Quagsire my, is pretty my tough team too. in particular. Yeah. Interesting. I don't have that problem. I always have. <laughs> yeah. I always have something with at least a grass move. <laughs> yeah. If not a grass type. So. Well, so. But my, I've I've learned to really like grass. My types, team so. choices mostly come from Gen One, where uh, I, I like solidified what types I thought were useless and what types I thought uh -huh. were good. And grass types to me in Gen One at least were useless, even though I even understand though most people strong. will disagree with that. <laughs> even though I understand. Super strong. Yeah. But. Like, you can easily get through Gen 1 without any grass types and yeah. never miss having it. It's true. It's not the same necessarily. Compared to other later, gens, especially. In later generations. Yeah. I would say by by now, they're pretty much irreplaceable. Yeah. <laughs> they're quite well, strong. and ever since, uh, so ever since I stopped cheating in Pokemon. Right. Uh, <laughs> Being I've, a kid using Game yeah. Sharks and stuff. <laughs> Instead of using Game Sharks or glitches or whatever. Uh, my strategy is I always pick my team based on the Elite Four uh -huh. because the Elite Four That's is the so much goal. stronger yeah. than everybody before them. Mm -hmm. it, there's a there's kind of a skip, a level skip going from oh, like sure. Victory Road trainers to the Elite Four and like the last gym leader to the Elite Four, for sure. especially in Gen 1. The level difference is pretty drastic. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a team of six which a lot of people do. Most, mm -hmm. I would say probably most Pokemon players ha use a team yeah, of six Pokemon. Why wouldn't Pokemon, you want a variety? Yeah. And they probably keep their team relatively even in levels. Mm -hmm. They probably don't have one Pokemon that's way higher level than all the rest of their team. Mm -hmm. um, if you do that and you're spread out pretty evenly, you're only going to be like a level 40, 45, unless you do a lot of grinding by the yeah. time you get to the Elite Four in Gen 1. And I mean, if you they'll, skip they'll crush wilds, you. Wilds, yeah. Uh, even if you don't skip that many wilds, uh, if you, if you, yeah, anyway, and, uh, gen two was a fairly similar story. Um, mm -hmm. the way I always played gen two is I just, uh, used my starter almost ex exclusively. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of well, changed things. Gen two starters are all very good. <laughs> uh, -huh, especially Typhlosion. Yeah. Typhlosion is my man. Um, so I mean, in, for alligator is better, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> in uh in diamond uh i think i had a team of five mm -hmm. maybe five or six and i also unlike in pokemon black where i did the smart thing and i made my team based on the elite four uh -huh. <laughs> in did diamond not. i did not yeah. i didn't really pre-plan my Hence, team much no grass time <laughs> so part of the <laughs> thing is i actually was trying to play diamond as if i was kind of newish to pokemon Okay. And so I didn't do a ton of metagaming Smart and pre-gaming yeah. stuff. And it's one of the only and times I, 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 yeah. I regret it, actually, because it made the game more annoying. Interesting. In Pokemon Black, well, I, I went no in Pokemon with... because there's no Pokemon variety, so... Yeah, that, that's the other thing. Is <laughs> in Pokemon Black, I had, I had a clear plan of what my team was going to be. Uh, and uh, so, like, my fighting type... It was originally going to be Mian Fu, so I could evolve him into Mian Chao. Yeah. Mian Chao is really strong. Mian Chao is super strong. But yeah. you don't get it. it Mian Fu doesn't show up for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I, fighting types are really useful to have around even, uh, yeah. from early on. So I went with Sock, and oh, he's yeah. actually really good. Sock's so great, yeah. that was a totally fine choice. I like Sock a lot. My starter was the water type, um, Oshwat. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. I had, I'd also did Oshwat. Mm hmm. Uh, M uh, uh, Tepig is objectively better stat wise. Always, but I uh, I didn't need a fire type because I, I, I have hate a how strong they made the fire starters yeah. in three and three yeah. through five. Because I had absolutely ridiculous. I used a Pidov for my flying type. Yeah, uh, I love Pidov. Unpheasant's so, super cool. Yeah, and Unpheasant's been a, a staple of my love, team. Love Unpheasant. One of my favorite bird types. Yeah, I've I've always had a a flying type on my t on my end game team in mm -hmm. every generation, and they're usually one of the most useful Pokemon I have because they tend to be fast and have high attack. Mm -hmm. Um, I I had a Lipard for a while. Um, oh yeah, a, a dark, dark type. Dark type. But it's just so so frail. Yeah, it's not great. So I wound up with a Chandelure, 
and that was <laughs> that was <laughs> you went from a Bidoof to a Dragonite. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got it. Yes. Cool. Easily MVP of the party. I absolutely love Chandelure. Uh, he's he's on my secondary team. No. He didn't quite make my main favorite team that I could possibly have in a game. Yeah. But uh, like in my Sword and Shield playthrough, I had a Chandelure because yeah. he's just so good. And I love ghost types. So yeah. Yeah. Chandelure is awesome. I feel like in Gen 5 is when ghost types really got good. Oh, yeah. So got like real good. My favorite thing that Gen 4 did was introduce the uh, distinction between yes. uh. physical and special attacks within the same type. Yeah. Because as I've explained Made before. Made a lot of Pokemon much better. <laughs> As I've explained before, um, a type was, uh, like, all uh, grass-type moves were special. All fire-type mm -hmm. moves were special. All normal-type moves were physical. Mm -hmm. And then there were That's some true. weird ones. A modern player sounds insane. Yeah. There were some weird ones, like, all ghost-type moves were physical. Physical. Makes no makes sense Which makes no sense to me. All. And so Gengar's 130 <laughs> special was worthless Absolutely in Gen worthless, 1 and yeah. Gen 2 because... Made him good defensively against special yeah. types, but... And that's uh, pretty much it. So he actually got kind of worse in Gen 2 because then it was special the attack and special defense. Yeah. And so he but has this special big attack special attack useless. stat that's almost useless. I mean, you can teach him, like, Psychic. Yeah. And then he will I mean, hit yeah, pretty great. hard with Psychic. But he's not a Psychic You get no type, stab damage. So you, no so, yeah. no yeah. stab bonus. And, uh, and sure, his Shadow Ball will still hit hard because... He, a high level Gengar has uh, his base attack is 65, which is not great, but mm -hmm. it's not nothing. And he's a relatively sturdy Pokemon. So right. it's not like his shadow ball is worthless, but it's so much stronger starting in gen four. Yeah. And, and still even compared to Chandelure, his special yeah. attack is just so ridiculous. Yeah, Chandelure's is actually even just a little higher so than Gengar's, insane. which is crazy. Yeah, he's, he's unkillable. That guy. Yeah. Because you won't have a chance to hit him. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a Zeb Strika as my electric type. Oh, cool. The zebra. Is, he's, he's pretty good. He's, he's all cool. right. He's, he's, cool, he's also least. a bit frail. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was good. Um, I think that was it, actually. Because I, uh, I, I only had five on my team. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually try to have my team be as small as possible so that uh, they're higher level. Right. Because there's less more EXP, EXP to yeah. have to go around. So as of Gen 5, the EXP share still works as um, it get, it splits the EXP and gives the bulk to the Pokemon that was in the fight mm -hmm. and then the rest to um, the Pokemon with the EXP share. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get up to two in the game, oh, as sweet. far as I know, because I, I had two. Mm -hmm. So I would just do that. And then you get a, a lucky better, egg, which give, increases... The EXP you yeah. get. So I'd put that nice. on my lead Pokemon and then have two... Uh, EXP share Pokemon. Yeah. Nice. And so that that was a Pretty nice quick. way to build Especially up EXP compared to, a bit quicker. to past gens, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, now I have Rashiram on my team. Uh, nice. Fire Dragon type. Yes. So that's he's, pretty cool. He's very cool. Yeah. Uh, how'd you like the... I mean, the landscapes and the, the, the cities and stuff? They're, I thought they, they were, were pretty, pretty cool. cool. I, liked, I liked the designs. Some of the some of the New York elements that they brought into it were pretty cool. The city elements. Oh uh, yeah. I, yeah, it didn't look all that cityish to me, but mm. uh, like not not compared to uh, X and Y. Sure, I that mean, was more. Yeah. That's very more city like. Just the they were able to make it look so much grander. Yeah, with with the way that the camera is and stuff. I think uh, I still like this idea. So uh, getting off topic of Pokemon for a bit, but just. Uh, What's Pokemon? This this would be a cool idea for an RPG, I think, and that would be uh, and possibly for a Pokemon game is you start in a central location, um, and you can go to any uh, go to any town in any order you want. Whoa, like a video game. And I like I like the idea of so in the Pokemon Origins anime. Yeah, they sh they showed the uh, idea that gym leaders have different teams. Yes, that they can choose from. Love that. So I liked the idea of what if you it made it so sense. you could the player could go to any town in any order they want, and then the gym leader would adjust their team to right. the player's level. Yeah, love that. That would be cool because, like, I mean, that's people have been talking about an open world Pokemon yeah. game. That's what they want. Because, like, so, I mean, if, that's, if you think that would about work. if you think about Brock, for instance, yeah. he's He's incredibly weak. 
Yeah. I mean, like, why level does he nine run Pokemon. a gym if yeah. he's got two Pokemon that are both l- below level 15 and yeah. they're weak? It's like, why is he a gym leader? Like, it's w- like what makes him so special? Well, it's because you were a baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what if what if that was his team if you're coming to, if that if he's the first gym leader? Yeah, like brackets. Fight, but yeah. his team, if you come at level 50, is like... Right. It's like, oh, uh, he's got a level, a level 70 Onyx now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a level 70 Steelix. Yeah, or, he's got a, um, and he's got a ride a on. Golem. And, yeah, Golem. He's with got, like, Earthquake and Rock He's like, let's and, go. Yeah. Bring it on, yeah. Like, I'll show you the Rock type. I would, I would love real. a ripped Brock who's yeah. got a Steelix and a Golem and just, like, rips you apart. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I love cool. that idea. And then uh, it would also be cool because I don't... Th- remember having seen this in a pokemon game before but uh have your starting place instead of being a small village mm-hmm. uh you're like in a, uh in an apartment in a big like a apartment city. building in yeah. the middle of a city because like for one thing and they could make f- it look like tokyo yeah it's a japanese game so you go fight a, a gym in the in osaka like in the yeah, little right in like a little tiny cute little village or i something. think that'd be a really cool yeah. pokemon game that'd personally. be really cool yeah yeah yeah, I think I think it'd be cool if they just if they made some changes. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I think Sword and Shield made quite a bit of changes. Yeah, and it felt very new and fresh in a lot of ways. Uh, but th- if they if they like totally changed the formula, it'd be pretty yeah. cool. I think so. Like procedurally generated content yeah. has That's, hasn't totally shifted how games are but played it's, and it's made. Boomed quite but a bit. I think it's a really useful tool because so one of my things with games with big worlds is Mm -hmm. when I play a game that's got this big, expansive world, I want to explore it. Yeah. But the thing is, is I I always realize as I'm exploring it, like, oh, thousands of other people have already been here. And also, uh, you can go online anywhere and find a map of all this. Yeah. So I'm not not discovering anything. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's almost no discovery. Like, sure, if I ignore all those guides, Mm -hmm. I can have some personal discovery. I can be like, oh, I didn't know this thing was here. Right. But most other people did. Mm -hmm. So it's not that special. But then you play a game like Minecraft and your seed is unique. Yeah. So everything like, is Yo, this new. cave is crazy. You're finding stuff that no one has ever seen before. Te- yeah, yeah. In, at least not in the exact configuration, in configuration it is in your world. And it's so true. I love that idea for big open world procedural games. Procedural open world, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the appeal of No Man's Sky Yeah, when it was announced, you know? Yeah, and I think... It's just like the exploration element. Yeah, and like that didn't necessarily succeed super well, that what? game. That went really well. What are you talking about? <laughs> That was a joke. Yeah. That it went well. It um, did not. But I think <laughs> we need to keep trying yeah. because I think eventually it'll be a really great game. Yeah, Some studio will come out with a really great game with that concept. I think uh, something in like the Fable world, I think would be excellent. Oh, sure. In that way, which they're making a new Fable, by the way. Oh, yeah. Um, I, will, I, I think just a classic fantasy element. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Or maybe like Elder Scrolls 6 or something. Sure. Like... Yeah. I think that's the perfect, you know, open world, uh, you know, setting. Yeah. Is fantasy yeah. Med- medieval. So, but I mean, for a Pokemon game, it'd be super cool. Mm-hmm. Like, what if the wild area wasn't like readable and didn't have a pattern? Yeah. What if it didn't look the same for every yeah, player it's not every like time? Yeah. This weather is always on this day and there's always these Pokemon in that weather in mm-hmm. this area. No. What if it was like, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go there, cool. and f- go there and find out what Pokemon are there. I and don't know. Another mechanic is really like cool. uh, NPCs that level with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, I think this can be abused. I think uh, it's not the answer to everything, and it shouldn't be used everywhere. But I think it's a great mechanic that can be used tastefully in places. Mm-hmm. Um, because in some cases, you it, it, you have uh, two problems with either you can if you're someone who isn't doesn't grind a lot and doesn't necessarily fight every enemy. You can be underprepared for places and then you have to go back and grind, which, which is sucks for most much people. never fun. Yeah. Um, or you have the opposite problem and you've grinded so much that you're over leveled for everything and everything is too easy. Mm-hmm. And I think having some degree of level scaling where NPCs level with you, uh, is cool. But if you do that to everybody, it can get kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And then you're fighting like, these these frogs that are level like 90 level frogs. ninety, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that take out half your damage, yeah. half your health every time. Yeah, 
that'd be awesome. Mm-hmm. What if that's the final boss, though? You didn't yeah. know. Big frog. <laughs> Big frog. Let's do it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's how I felt. Um, I kind of did that with Breath of the Wild, is I did kind of ignore the internet. Mm-hmm. And it w- and it had just come out. Yeah. Like, you played it later, a lot later, when you heard a lot about it. Yeah. I had barely, like, people were still going, like, yo, this game's crazy. Because, like, most people hadn't beaten it yet. And so... I got to really experience it for the first time, you know? Yeah. And I did just try to just explore all totally on my own and just not look up maps of anything. Like I found about a hundred shrines without looking at a map of yeah. shrines. And I thought that was pretty cool. That was a lot more fun, you know, than yeah. just knowing where all the shrines are and stuff. I don't, for me, it didn't really detract from the game knowing where yeah. the shrines were because uh, I didn't look at like what the maps looked like. I just had an over, uh, like a overall worldview map right. that was like, just a oh, copy a of the end game map and it just here. showed where all the shrines were. Yeah. Uh, so like I still got the discovery to thing. To define the of, shrines still, yeah. Yeah, and I got you know, to the area, but yeah. like see the land, landscape without having seen it before and it looked cool. Right. And, so, so yeah. yeah, that's good at least. Yeah. And also, there were some shrines that I found without looking for them, and that mm-hmm. was always interesting. Yeah, yeah, stumbling upon a shrine was always is always fun. Yeah, yep, that's pretty cool. So, speaking of game design, game design. Yeah, that's basically what we were just talking oh. about, right? Yes. Technically, sure. So, um, I wanted to talk about this in this episode because I don't know. I just think it's interesting. So, I I wanted to be a game designer. Ever since I was like 12. Dork. Shut up. <laughs> Nerd. Nerd. <laughs> um, and it really, it was Pokemon that drove oh, yeah. that decision. Totally. Um, and so up until all the way through high school, I was like, I'm going to be a game designer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That That's was always what you said. Yeah. And I, I, I would. For sure. And I was going into when I went into college that the plan was go to school for game design or at least learn things that will be useful in game design at school mm-hmm. one way or the other. Um, when I first met with my college advisor, he suggested I go into computer science, which, by the way, not necessarily Terrible the idea. field that you want to go into if you want to yeah, be a game. Designer. Makes no sense. I mean, I'll be honest. I think he was like, oh, that's computers, right? Yeah, Question exactly. Mark? Which. Yeah. I, I understood that later on <laughs> that, yeah, that he probably didn't know what he was talking about. Um, and then I actually transferred from, uh, or yeah, I, I stopped going to the, my local community college and actually went to the art Institute mm-hmm. where they had a game art and design program. But, uh, like, I didn't, oh, cool. I didn't really last long there. Uh, yeah. one thing is it was really expensive and the other <laughs> is, uh, I'm, I don't really like art that much. Yeah, you're, so you're not really an artist. So like, and it's funny cause as a kid yeah. I always doodled, huh. but yeah. uh, going from doodling to doing like life drawings yeah. actually, for hours at art, a time art. actually kind of sucks. I, I don't really like it. That's not your personally. thing. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I watched a video. So I, I follow the YouTube channel Extra Credits, mm-hmm. which has been around for, very good stuff. gosh, 10 years now, probably, maybe mm-hmm. a little longer, um, which no, none of the original people that were working on it are even a part of it anymore. Oh, interesting. It's totally become a totally different thing. But uh, they did an episode called So You Want to Be a Designer, and mm-hmm. they talked about what a game designer was and what they were not. And I watched that video, right. and I kept completely changed my career path interesting you're like that's not gonna happen because so like it's not that being a game designer isn't something it it still sounds like a very interesting job Mm -hmm. and it's still something that i think would be cool to do but it's not something that i think i'm yeah you're like suited for that's not gonna be my thing yeah and so i changed from that to going into it and that's definitely more my ballpark yeah been much better but uh i still find game design to be a very fascinating subject oh for sure and so i follow a few it's fun uh, to talk about at least youtube channels of game designers that just like go into detail about various games they are playing and like talk Mm -hmm. about the design of them Mm -hmm. yeah i love deep dive fact videos on games Mm -hmm. like talking about the deep stuff of the actual coding and the design of the game it's yeah. really very interesting especially on games you like and know mm-hmm. hearing hearing deeper stuff about it's always always super interesting so yeah i was yeah. gonna 
I was going to have uh, my own game design company was the end goal. Nice. Like I was going to get Hardcore. some industry experience being like working at another company, but then eventually start wow. my own studio. Yeah. And big boy. My, my main goal was to create it, my own MMO. Yeah, of course. Cause so Which me, now a lot of people are doing. Yeah. So. Because me and my friend Ben, on we, mobile and stuff, we especially. were former WoW players. Mm-hmm. We were like, okay, there let's were things make it better in every There way. were things that we liked about WoW, but there were a lot of things we didn't like. So let's make a game that has none of the things we didn't like and all the things we did like. And I even came up with this uh, this stat diagram, and mm-hmm. I'm very, I'm still very proud bad. of this. It's actually not bad. Um, yeah. And it's the idea of you have four stats that you can directly influence. And then there are four stats that are indirectly influenced by those stats. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, you have, like, strength and uh, vitality. And uh, if you increase both of those, then it also increases your physical defense. Sure. Or something. Um, I don't remember it very well. <laughs> I haven't looked at it in a few years. Nice. Um, but, yeah. And then also, I really liked this idea. And it was, and Ooh. apparently there are games that have actually done this. I'm so sure. It's cool. Yeah. But it, rare, it's it rare. An idea a, is actually original. Yeah, it was a, uh, a skill tree, but it, ha- it would have like a fog of war thing over it. So mm-hmm. you could only oh, yeah. see That's happened in games the early sure, but parts of it. Great but idea. Also, I do like that. You have, you would have every skill tree for every class was just mm-hmm. all one giant tree yeah. and you could just move along different paths through it to mm-hmm. kind of customize your own completely class. yeah but you would i do love that you would only be making one decision at a time because of the whole fog of war yeah thing. and i think that i mean ff10 is the is the skill tree you think of yeah that's you think what inspired like that. it was yeah. the sphere grid because absolutely uh, absolutely fantastic yeah. skill tree because like if you're ti- if you're on Titus's sphere grid, if you want to be start using some black magic, Guess you just what? move over to, you can go to Lulu's yeah. sphere grid and Very get cool. some black magic. I love so that. Idea. I loved that idea, and I wanted to take that a step further and just make this one big completely open uh, yeah. skill tree. Be interesting. Yeah. More customization in, in MMOs and general RPGs are always, is always super fun. Yeah. It's always a lot more, a lot more interesting. It's like you're playing a D and D character where you can like yeah. actually do whatever you Basically, want, pretty much. Yeah. I think that's that's happening a lot nowadays. Is that more customization, more open world, more like player customization, just yeah. like letting the player do whatever they want basically and i love i love one thing i love about D, which we haven't played a lot of but we've we've but done we like two it. campaigns <laughs> yeah. and we lo- uh, and i love the idea of it even more than the game but i still like yeah. the game too and um, when we have some time maybe someday we will play it yeah um i love that you can just you can kind of just like use it as a template use it as uh, just take keep the rules but then just do everything homebrew yeah and yeah. it's gr- it, great and like Every, everything being up to the DM's discretion. Like, you can have DMs that are super strict on all the player handbook rules and, you know, mm-hmm. Dungeon Master handbook rules, or ones that are that use, like, half the rules and sort of are up in the air otherwise. Mm-hmm. Like, that's cool that you can just do that. Yeah, you know? and it just it just provides a framework that yeah. where you don't have to think of everything yourself. You don't have to think of all the game mechanics yourself. The game mechanics are already there, Yeah, and you can just Unless build you the content think of yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yep, very interesting. Speaking of not playing things, I haven't played anything in so long. <laughs> right. Because again, talking about buried the house in house. Thing. Bro, I haven't played a video game in so long. I bought a, I bought a couple of video games though. Yeah. So that's what matters. Because mm-hmm. that because the Japanese taiko drum rhythm game was on oh, sale right. yeah. on Switch, so I bought that. You did mention that. Because yeah. I love that. Um I played that at a con one time and absolutely loved it. So Oh wow! Then um, it's been a while, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was forever ago. Although it was the last con I went to, so it was probably six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I just uh, a couple days ago I went into Animal Crossing mm-hmm. because I hadn't played in so long. Because yeah. during the move and stuff, basically up until that point, I had been playing every day, trying to at least do the daily things and talk to all my villagers and stuff. Yeah, but um. I took just over a month break from Animal Crossing. Yeah, wow. So over a month. And uh, so I went in. My hair was all messed up. And there were cockroaches in my house. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what happens. 
I went and talked to everybody and they're like, you've been gone for like a whole month. Are you okay? Were you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> we missed you. So that was good. Got to talk to everyone. And I picked up uh, something like 120 weeds oh, wow. from, my, from my island. But I cleaned it up, got rid of all the cockroaches. We're good to go again. Yeah. So now that our mom has started playing, which our mom has started playing Animal Crossing. Right. Uh, I'm going to get back into it a little bit so I can give her stuff mostly. Mm. <laughs> but it'll be fun. I think I'm ready to play it a little more often again. Probably not every day again, yeah. but play it every once in a while a little bit. That'll be fun. My villagers must think, man, I guess he's not ever coming back yeah. ever. And they're right. He's not. <laughs> it's been Loved it. What are you talking about? Probably two or three months since yeah. I've played. I didn't expect you to really get into it, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's just, not your kind of game. It's really not. Um, uh, Nintendo hasn't announced anything in a long time. Right. People are freaking out about it a little bit. Um, they did just announce, though, that Pikmin 3 is coming to the Switch. Oh, it was, nice. It was a Wii U game. Um, and that's a Wii U port. I'm actually really excited about because I didn't play Pikmin 3 <laughs> oh, yeah. on the Wii U at all. And I love Pikmin 1, and Pikmin 1 and 2. Love those games. So I'm actually really excited that it's coming to the Switch because mm-hmm. I'll actually get it and play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, same thing was true of um, New Super Mario, Mario Bros. U. Mm-hmm. I never played that on the Wii U, but I finally got it when, the, when it came out on Switch. So that's cool. Cool. But I was actually one of those people who played the Wii U, so I'm kind of surprised right. I didn't play those games, but there was a lot of games at, at the time, so yeah. so that'll be cool. Um, they're, they've also teased an announcement. Uh, this is the Tell Brian about Nintendo News segment of the podcast. <laughs> um, uh, I think in like a, they're having like a, Either like a, it's like a shareholders meeting or something. Oh, yeah. Something very businessy, but they usually make pretty big announcements during that Mm -hmm. to keep people paying them. Um, Right. And all they've said is that there's, they have an announcement for a game that will make people that players are going to love, I Hmm. think, is what they said. So, of course, a lot. (laughs) A lot. Yes. The Bakugan game, everyone's favorite. Um, I think uh, a lot of people are speculating it's the Mario. Uh, trilogy remaster thing that everyone still hopes exists right who knows if that's real i mean that'd be awesome but uh some are speculating that it's um uh, metroid prime 4 Hmm. which makes no sense i think (laughs) because that's been in development hell for a while now i'd be shocked and like a new studio just picked it up like this year so i highly doubt it's that so who knows we'll see might be pretty cool though uh another thing just happened i think yesterday Mm-hmm. Um, there was a business journal or something, some some business website listed a um, a new Switch model. Oh yeah, uh, that was an improved, uh, upgraded Switch, basically better screen and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like a, people have been talking about the Switch Pro in air quotes oh, yeah. for a long time. Now people are thinking, oh, this could actually be it. And yeah, it says it'll come out in twenty twenty one. Total speculation. One post said this. Yeah. Very likely this is fake or or nothing. So there's been, I feel like there's a new Nintendo rumor every week now just because they haven't said much in a while. Yeah. So just more rumors are just piling out cr- like crazy. Um, although there's one more um, one that has some credence because it was listed on two different Amazon websites. Oh, uh, Amazon UK and uh, another country's Amazon, not America but they listed a Skyward Sword HD for Switch. Oh. So that, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, Skyward Sword haters out there. I love Skyward Sword. Mm -hmm. It's my third favorite Zelda game. And I think that would be amazing if they put that on the Switch. So possibly exciting stuff. We'll see in the coming weeks if they actually announce anything. (laughs) No. Who knows? So there you go. There you have it. Is Nintendo doing anything? Who Question knows? Mark? Who knows? There you go. <laughs> Anything else we want to talk about, Brian? Nope. I guess we're almost that... exactly an hour in. Yeah. We're amazing. <laughs> we did it. I guess this is an hour long podcast. Who knew? Roughly. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's good. So, uh, thank you guys for listening. 
If you have any comments, anything cool, please let us know. Put them in the comments on YouTube. Uh, you know, give us a shout out on Twitter, anything like that. Um, also, uh, be really helpful if you guys could give us uh, ratings on the various uh, podcast uh, platforms mm-hmm. that you use, iTunes, Google Podcasts, anything like that. That's really helpful. Uh, so if you could do that for us, that'd be awesome. And go ahead and follow us on Twitter at Game Brothers Pod. Would be also amazing. Subscribe to us on YouTube if you want. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who has uh, clicked the download button. Um, yes. Da- downloads do help our m- metrics. Uh, da- for some reason with podcasts, downloads are very important. Yeah. So if you're going to listen... Please download. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Let's us know you're actually listening, basically. Yeah. To our streamers, though, we, we love you guys, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Great. Very helpful. Uh, <laughs> so thank you guys again for listening. Uh, tell a friend about the show where we talk about the games. Yep. All the games. There you go. Thanks, guys. See you.